Good day, everyone. Welcome to the USA Swimming Olympic Team Swimming Head Coaches Announcement. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I'd like to turn the conference over to Ms. Lindsay Mintenko, USA Swimming National Team Manager Director. Please go ahead, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're super excited about this announcement this morning. Really looking forward to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. And to kick things off this morning, I'd like to show a short video <coughs> announcing our 2020 Olympic Team Head Coaches. Uh, Greg Meehan and Dave Durden will be our 2020 Olympic team head coaches, both of whom are with us on the phone today. Dave, I'm going to pass it to you if you have any comments you'd like to say. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Lindsay. Um, and hello, everyone. Uh, I'm excited uh, about this news and, and extremely humbled. Uh, in working with Lindsay and working with USA Swimming uh, through this process, I was able to you know, look back historically and review the coaching legends that have been in this position. And I was incredibly humbled by that list from Bob Kippis uh, all the way through Eddie Reese, Mark Schubert, Skip Kinney, Greg Troy, Bob Bowman, uh, just tremendous coaching legends uh, in our sport that have been in this position. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. And, and as I said earlier, extremely humbled. I just want to thank our swimmers, uh, our Cal Aquatics community, uh, our support staff at Cal that have uh, helped me through my time here, and our athletic director, Jim Knowlton, uh, who's provided the leadership uh, to continue to help our program uh, be in a, in a world-class position. But most importantly, I want to thank my wife uh, and our kids, uh, Jack and Mia, that have helped me um, be who I am as a coach and have uh, followed and supported this journey uh, that I've been on to, to this position. I'm excited to work with Lindsay. I'm excited to work with USA Swimming, and I'm really excited to work with Greg Meehan uh, to help us uh, push our uh, men's program, our men's and women's program, uh, forward to the 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympics and help our uh, men and women achieve great success there. So thank you very much, and go Team USA. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Dave. Um, Greg, you, I'm going to pass it on to you. Do you have any comments? I do. Uh, good morning, everyone uh, from the West Coast. Um, thank you, Lindsay. I'd like to thank Lindsay, uh, Mike Unger, Tim Hinchy, uh, everyone from USA Swimming that uh, has been involved in this process. Uh, as Dave noted, we are joining a list of, of coaching legends, and uh, it's not lost on either one of us. And um, it's an incredibly, um, it was a, a moment that uh, sort of allowed for some self-reflection and appreciation uh, as it's the greatest honor of my professional career. And um, with that, I, you know, I really want to start at home and thank my wife, Tess, uh, my sons, Sal and James. Uh, their love and support uh, allow uh, all of us really as a family to uh, continue on in this, uh, this journey that um, has gotten us to this point. Uh, I'd also like to extend a huge uh, note of gratitude to everyone here at Stanford University, our head athletic director, Bernard Muir, our, our associate head coach in the women's program, Tracy Slusser, and quite frankly, uh, all of the women that have been involved with this program here at Stanford over the last six and a half years. Uh, not just the ones who are here, the ones who are going to be here in the future, but certainly the ones that helped uh, kind of build it to this point. And uh, I'm so grateful for, for all of them and uh, what they've helped uh, turn this into. Um, and as that sort of self-reflection and appreciation passes a little bit, I get really excited about the future. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with uh, Dave, uh, Team USA, and all the amazing coaches and athletes around the country as we uh, prepare ultimately for Omaha and says the first step to success in Tokyo for the 2020 games. So let's go USA. Awesome. Thanks, guys, so much. Really appreciate it. I think we're going to open it up to questions now. So, Alan, if you would, um, if you could help the media with prompting for questions. 
Yes, ma'am. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question today, you can do so at this time by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Once again, that is star 1 if you'd like to ask a question. We'll pause for just a moment. We'll allow everyone the chance to signal. And once again, everyone, that is star one if you'd like to ask a question. We'll pause for just another moment. We'll take our first question from Elliot Almond with the San Jose Mercury News. All right, ready? Uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever people are. This is for uh, this is for Greg and Dave both. Team at an Olympics. I mean, the, you know, the history of of American swimming is so great, and I'm wondering what kind of um, not really burden, but what kind of pressure is it to try to continue the legacy? Uh, thanks, Elliot. Good to hear from you. Um, it's an enormous responsibility. Um, I don't know the pressure is the right word. I think as coaches, we uh, continually uh, put pressure on ourselves to be successful in this arena. Um, there's an added amount, amount of uh, responsibility given that it's on the international scale and um, we are part of a much larger uh, legacy within um, USA Swimming at the Olympic Games, but um, you know we're we're excited more than um, than anything else. And um, you know, as we both touched on, we're we've had great examples, and we're going to lean on on coaches uh, of Olympic Games over the past few quads and on their experience and and guidance as well to help us move forward. Yeah, uh, Elliot. Thanks for the question. I think it's a great one, and, and I think it it, um, it allows us to to have a uh, uh, a lot of responsibility to continue the, the tradition. I think anytime you have that, we 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 look to um, look to the leadership before us. Uh, I mean, we've we've already uh, you know between myself, Greg, and Lindsay. Have, have already gotten to work on this a little bit and, and reached out to uh, both Bob and, and David, uh, our, our previous uh, head Olympic coaches, uh, to, to find some secrets for, for our success in Rio as a country. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a pressure, if, if we want to use that word, that is shared amongst our great coaching community in the U.S., and and that's uh, that's something that um, that I think we all we all stand shoulder to shoulder with as coaches, and and, and really look towards uh, the Tokyo 2020 as a competition where we want to be successful, and we feel that um, that that push uh, behind us from our from our coaching community. So we're uh, I to, to echo Greg, I think we're we're excited about that, and at the same time, uh, looking looking at the folks that have come before us and, and their success to, to help us. Um, uh, guide this team going forward. Thanks, everybody. All right. And uh, once again, at star one, I'd like to ask a question. We'll next go to Beth Harris with the Associated Press. Hi, I'd like to ask uh, both Dave and Greg, where do you um, see the national team evolving as we lead up to Tokyo? It's um, you know, there's a bit of a change in the guard going on here. You know, the Phelps era is over. Ledecky is still leading the way on the women's side. But there's going to be some, uh, obviously, new faces and, and some people emerging that, um, you know, a lot of sports fans are not familiar with. So where where do you see things evolving to in the lead up to Tokyo? Yeah, Beth, um, I, I I think it is, it is a, going to be a combination of some new faces uh, like we experienced in 2016. Uh, along with some veteran leadership of 
of uh, some athletes that have had success at Olympic Games or multiple Olympic Games. That's always been a successful mix for us. It's hard to um, look two years down the road and, and to see what that personality and what the characteristics of, of that 2020 Olympic team will have. But our typical Olympic teams have had elements of that makeup. And uh, I think we're going to continue to rely upon the success of those athletes and the experience of, the, of those athletes, especially as we look forward to 2019. We have great international opportunities between a world championships, a world university games, a Pan American games that's going to prepare our athletes for the Olympic stage in 2020. And I think we take those experiences and those different experiences and, and pull them together as a team moving through the pressure cooker that is our 2020 uh, Olympic trials. And, and once you get through that grind, uh, I think it really sets the character and the personality of our team uh, going forward in Tokyo. Uh, thanks for the question, Beth. Uh, Dave really touched on on the majority of things there. Um, one of the things that's always impressive about USA Swimming is the quality of depth, and uh, ultimately, at each uh, within each quad and from quad to quad, you have your um, you know your senior members that have, have will continue on from 2012, 2016, 2020, and beyond. Um, and you're always going to have newcomers and. Stars are going to be made over the next two years as, as the next Michael Phelps, the next Katie Ledecky uh, come in through uh, the system. And that is the one thing that uh, is always incredibly impressive about um, Team USA and USA Swimming. Uh, and, and ultimately, that kind of is the result of really hardworking, talented coaches back at home and uh, continuing to help Team USA move forward from quad to quad. Okay, so we'll move on to Pat Ford with Yahoo Sports. Yeah, question for both gentlemen, uh, as we've seen in the background on uh, uh, Dave's wall, he has the, the four calendar years on up there, and the sources tell me that Greg has the same thing. Uh, I'm just kind of wondering how much you guys operate your jobs from both the day-to-day -day standpoint, but keeping the four-year quadrennium in mind and how that can maybe help you prepare for this Olympics. Pat, I think you have to check your sources. I don't know if Greg has that in his office. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, know, I, I think it, it is it, – it's, I have benefited from, from working with, with Greg in, in my early tenure here at Cal, and uh, I think it, it, it is a um, – it's something – it's a thought. It's a, it's a process that, that we've shared in terms of uh, Olympic success. And in terms of the day-to-day, -day, I think for me, and, and I, I don't want to speak for Greg, but I think for me, having what's behind me uh, on the wall is a, is a daily reminder to know where we are in relation to 2020 Olympic Games, the 2020 trials, uh, and, and, then, and then where we are today and what we need to be doing uh, in the day-to-day -to, -day to, to get better. So uh, usually as I go from one half of the wall to the other, which is going to happen in about three to four weeks, so as we get from the end of the calendar year in, in 2018 into 2019, um, it, it starts to, you know, the excitement, the pulse rate starts to increase a little bit as we get closer and closer. But um, uh, I think it's just been something that, that takes time. And, and for us at, at Cal, a part of our legacy is uh, being world class. That's been established by our Cal aquatic community and, and what that means and what that's defined by. And, just carrying that forward, being a vehicle to carry that forward is, is really what, what I look at as my job in a in a day to day and certainly the Olympic Games. You, you don't get much more world class than being at the Olympic Games. Uh, thanks, Pat. Good to hear from you. Um, and, and Dave really answered the, the question uh, for the most part. And um, one of the things that we um, we talk about here, we don't necessarily have to uh, be thinking about the Olympics every day. We don't have to think um, about long course success every day. I think just the system that we have in place allows us to um, get better at both. And really, we're just trying to be the best uh, athletes that we can as uh, each individual pursues their own um, goals and dreams. And so I think that helped us just constantly have the backdrop of long course success in mind. And um, 
And it doesn't matter really whether someone is uh, trying to make an Olympic team or win a medal or uh, they're trying to make their first final at the NCAAs. We're, we're just um, working towards getting better. And as long as we continue to, to value uh, long course swimming in our training and racing, um, then we're going to have success on the collegiate level as well. And, and feeling like we haven't had to sacrifice uh, one for the other. Um, and, and as Dave said, now that we're, we're getting close to, to turning uh, the page and we're going to be at uh, 18 months here pretty soon, that's when it gets really fun because you, you start to sort of amp things up as you uh, maybe you participate in more pro swim series meets and, and getting ready for the international competitions this summer. Um, but, but just keeping it in perspective of the bigger picture. Uh, you know, if you look back to the 2015 summer, it wasn't necessarily a great summer for USA Swimming, but um, it was still part of the greater story of the 20 success, 2016 success. Um, and so we're, you know, just continuing to move it forward. Thank you, guys. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Okay, and we'll take our next question from Roxana Scott with USA Today. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I was just um, looking back a little bit on Rio, and I know that seems like a long time ago now, but um, USA Swimming had 33 overall medals uh, during that competition. I'm just wondering, um, are there things that you learned uh, from that experience that you would bring into this in, in terms of making any changes or just, um, you know, the experience of that Olympics and what your takeaways were from that? Yeah, I, I think... Um... The, the experience certainly um, gave a lot of notes. We left uh, we left the Rio uh, experience with a lot of take homes, as we call them, and uh, things that we would absolutely want to to do again uh, in this next quad, and and some areas where we can be better. Uh, just the same as we left the Panpac uh, Championships this past summer in 2018 with some some things that we wanted to do uh, better. Um, but you know, ultimately, we're just um, uh, it, as the team starts to put itself together at the Olympic trials in Omaha, that's when we really start to um, be able to put some of those finer things together uh, from a team dynamic perspective. Uh, and, and speaking on the women's team, uh, some things that, that we'll do to, to continue to, to get to know each other, to, can you, to come together and inspire each other uh, for great success and, and winning medals and, um, and, and being uh, as competitive as we can be uh, as a nation. And so um, that's that's kind of some of the, the team dynamic stuff. But um, ultimately, through the, the quad, we're always um, learning about uh, things that we want to do differently. And there were some things that were done in 2016 that were off the charts good. And we want to take some of that with us and, and tweak a couple of things and, and make this uh, experience uh, as, as best as possible for our athletes. Yeah, I think uh, the, the beauty of, of USA Swimming is that we have such a great support staff around these athletes, and that starts well before we get to the, uh, the Olympic Games in, in Tokyo. And, and also the United States Olympic Committee, the USOC support and what they provide our athletes, uh, not only in a, an Olympic setting, but in a world championship setting, in a Pan Pac setting, uh, for Team USA, for, for USA Swimming has been something that we have uh, collectively as a, as a staff, uh, as coaches uh, have, have leaned upon. And, and so that, that's something that, that we'll continue to do from 2016 uh, into 2020 to have success. But I mean, you know, I think Greg had, had said it so eloquently that it, the, the personality, the, the, the characteristics of the team is, is one that is, um, um, is, is, is kind of to be determined. And, and that'll, That'll, that'll change and in, in, in some of the things that we do. I'll, I'll never forget, you know, uh, Michael Phelps's not only performances in 2016, but his leadership that he brought to that environment in 2016. You can't put a medal count on that. Uh, and that was something that uh, I think really resonated and echoed amongst uh, the team. It certainly did for me as a coach. So uh, I think as we move forward from, uh, from 2016 into 2020, uh, a, a lot of the things that we'll do as 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 coaches, as as head coaches, and then subsequently as assistant coaches, when when that's named in 2020, will will help us move forward and have uh, success in Tokyo 2020.
All right, we'll move on to our next question. We'll take that from Jim Rusnak with Splash Magazine. Hi, this question is actually uh, for Lindsay Mintenko. Um, Lindsay, uh, what were some of the criteria you considered in selecting these two guys, and what, what, what do you think they bring to the table for the team? Hi, Jim. Yeah, first of all, um, we, there was a committee, a selection committee that was put together for the selection of these coaches, and so there were four people on the committee, and the, the committee then recommended um, unanimously uh, Greg and Dave to Mike Unger and myself, and then we ultimately um, brought the nomination to Tim Hinty and the USOC. Of course, the USOC, this being Team USA, uh, needed to approve our nominations, and again, did with... Um, with uh, great respect, great honor, super great excitement that we all have in the building for Greg and Dave as well, um, moving into 2020. Um, I think what, what Greg and Dave bring to the table are um, different perspectives than what we currently have within USA Swimming. They um, think alike, but also think differently, which is really fun for us. Uh, they're going to challenge us, which we're really looking forward to, and looking forward to um, just working with them on a, da on a daily, weekly basis for the next 18 months as we prepare to to set up the best um, possible environment for athletes to be successful in Tokyo 2020. Thank you. Once again, everyone, that's star one, if you'd like to ask a question. We'll next go to Amy Berg. Hi, congratulations to both of you on this great honor. Um, just a really basic question. What what does one and this might be for Lindsay? What what do you do as a head coach, head Olympic coach? You've got all these athletes with their individualized pr training programs, all these different coaching philosophies. Is the job a lot of administrative, or is it like really writing programs in addition to choosing the relay team, which I think is a key aspect, right? Sure, I can I can definitely pass this one on to to Dave and Greg, but I think a lot of you know being. Being the head coach has some administrative pieces to it, but I think what's great about um, both Dave and Greg is their attention to detail and being able to work with the personal coaches that we will that the athletes will obviously come to the table with um, after Omaha. But I think being able to work with them and being able to pay t pay attention to that detail, so we can provide those personal coaches with that detail as we get ready to help them them and their athletes be successful when we get to Tokyo. But I'm willing to uh, pass it on to Dave and Greg and see if they have any more ideas as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, just to echo Lindsay, I mean, it is working with uh, our United States coaching community and helping these athletes push forward to uh, to have success in, in Tokyo 2020. Um, I do think we have a system in place of moving through our selection process at our U.S. Olympic trials that, that really test our athletes and um, – uh, puts them in, in probably the ultimate pressure situation. So coaches navigating athletes through that piece to turn around and have them and help them navigate their athletes through the Olympic piece is, is something that's really fresh on their mind, and we're going to take their experiences, their expertise, their knowledge, and, and navigating that experience at our Olympic trials to help us have Olympic success in 2020. Yeah, uh, really well said. Uh, probably one thing that I'd add on to that, um, and Lindsay touched on this a little bit, but uh, Dave and I have been um, home coaches uh, in previous Olympics. We've been assistant coaches for Team USA uh, in the 2016 games, and so we, we have a little bit of that um, experience with us to uh, help coaches that are either on staff or maybe they qualify, qualified an athlete, but haven't made the staff and to help them uh, through this process. Um, and that's something that uh, is kind of a really fun uh, experience, quite frankly, uh, as we get to our domestic camp and our international camp working towards um, getting into the village in, in Tokyo. Can I ask a quick follow-up? Sure. Um, thank you. So does every athlete or do most athletes get to bring their own personal coaches to training camps or not? I, I'll go ahead and answer that one. For one thing that we have allowed our um, athletes to do is for the domestic camp, we have allowed our athletes to bring their personal coaches to training camp. When we go overseas to our international camp, we like it to be strictly just team staff uh, so we can really um, expand on the culture, spend some time together as a team, and not have any outside influences. Great, thank you. 
Next, we'll go to Beth Harris with the Associated Press. Hi, this is for uh, Lindsay. Um, just wondered on the timing of the announcement. I seem to recall back uh, prior to Rio, it was about September of 2015 that the coaches were announced um, a little bit earlier this time around. Kind of what went into that timing decision? Sure, um, Beth, thanks for the question. I think a lot of things actually went into the timing decision. I think in 2012, we um, had our, our coaches about 18 months out as well, and then in 2016, uh, pushed it back a little bit. And then in 2020, the, the thought process behind it was to get to work with the coaches as much as possible um, prior to, for the planning stages of the, the camps, the competitions, the games, working with them to provide as much detail and as much information that we can gather from them. Um, to help us plan, to make sure our athletes are successful. And so working with them on a daily basis, um, just making sure that we can provide the best scenario to be successful in 2020. And in this case, we felt like be having a coach's voice, having a coach's influence on some of the decisions we made was a very important piece to the puzzle. Also, if I could just follow up real quick with Greg and Dave and ask an impertinent question about how old are you guys? <laughs> Brad, you want to answer that? Uh, yes, I'm two days older than Dave. We're both 42. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll take our last question from David Reeder with Swimming World Magazine. Hey, guys. Um, first of all, congratulations again. How does the preparation for being Olympic coaches start now. What do you have to do this summer with world championships as you go to these meets, the NCAA meets, the pro series meets? What do you have to do as you go along that involves getting ready for next summer? Uh, hi, David. Um, for now and, and uh, for the last several weeks, it's really just having conversations with Lindsay and Dave as we start to um, you know fine tune some things as we plan out the calendars for camps, dates, et cetera. Uh, and then it's um, really just kind of getting out and about and getting to meets, um, maybe traveling a little bit more to some pro swim series meets to be able to, to um, have the opportunity to have conversations with coaches and watch athletes race and just learn a little bit more. Cause uh, you know, even now we don't really know um, with any certainty who's going to make the Olympic mm -hmm. team in 2020. And so, um, you know, just getting to know coaches and athletes, um, uh, we do obviously know the, the teams for this summer with the three different uh, international competitions going on. And I know Open Water is getting ready for their uh, Worlds qualifying here in a couple of months. And so, um, you know, the, those teams are, are somewhat set. But uh, springboarding off of that and into the 2019-2020 season, just um, gathering as much information as we can, having conversations, um, and certainly uh, something that uh, Dave has already touched on and Lindsay touched on a little bit as well with um, speaking with uh, previous head Olympic coaches, uh, most specifically with, with David mm -hmm. and Bob the last time around. Yeah, you know, David, in, in a word, it's, um, it's just listening. It's listening to, to the athletes. It's, it's listening to, to the coaches. It, it's listening to um, uh, USA Swimming, uh, USA Swimming staff, sports science side, uh, United States Olympic Committee. Uh, to, to just understand um, and, and better help our culture be more and more successful as we go forward from Olympic game to Olympic game. So uh, right now, uh, you know, I, I do think it's uh, for us going forward. It's it's, it's listening uh, to, uh, to to the folks that have that have had success uh, in, in, in Olympic games from, from an athlete perspective, also from a from a coaching perspective as we're we're doing with David and Bob right now and, and, uh, and just trying to continue to, to, to move that forward for Team USA. Yeah. Um, is there anything involving the World Championships this summer? Will you guys be involved in the planning of that or some things you want to try out at that, at that event? I think both, both of us are, are involved uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a World Championship staff capacity. Um, you know, I, I think again, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, kind of come back to to the idea of our coaching community, and and we're gonna continue to rely upon that. So we're gonna rely upon the coaching staff that we have at World Championships uh, to help us be good in that environment, in that meet, and then take that from a World Championships to an Olympic Games. The great thing about a World Championships uh, right before or year before the Olympic Games 
is the format is very similar. Although you have 50s of stroke uh, in a mixed uh, 400 free relay, a lot of the events are similar. The, the format of the, of the competition will be the same. And so we can take a lot of things, a lot of experiences from 2019 and carry that forward into 2020. Agreed. I think uh, Dave touched on uh, on all of it there, um, and uh, you know, quite frankly, the, the to me the, the most important thing um, out of the summer is just giving people racing opportunities internationally. So you know, beyond the World Championships, those that are heading to the World University Games, Pan American Games, uh, the National Championships that'll be here actually at Stanford at the end of the summer, um, just getting as much racing and getting as much feedback as we can and as Dave touched on just having conversations and, and listening and um, and you know we'll, we'll uh, be uh, part of that uh, world championship experience but um, you know just really looking forward to seeing as many athletes uh, for Team USA race internationally as possible cool thanks guys All right, and one more opportunity. It is star one. If you'd like to ask a question at this time, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your student to reach our equipment. We'll pause for just another moment. All right, we'll take our question from Dan Diodano with Swimming World. Thanks, guys. Um, you've talked about uh, going through uh, with old, or old, not old, but former USA Olympic coaches and learning from that and from your experience in the past. Um, how much do you look to what uh, other countries are doing, especially at the, uh, you know, ge gearing up for the Olympic level when you're competing with them, how much do you pay attention to other countries and just what do you think um, the state of uh, USA swimming at the elite level is? I mean, we've got plenty of events where um, the USA wins just about every time and there's plenty of events where um, the USA hasn't won in, in quite some time. So I was just curious to think what you think the state of uh, elite USA swimming is at this point. Uh, I mean that, that's a that's a great question. Uh, I, I think we're um, I think as we go forward from where we are right now in 2018 through 2019, and, and at least how our quad has been um, structured over the the last couple of quads, is it allows multiple um, racing opportunities for the depth of our of our swimming to to really compete at an international level. So, in other words, we we have, uh, as Greg alluded to earlier, we have a World University Games that we're that we're sending a team and a staff to. We have a World Championships that we're sending a different team and different staff to. For the most part, we have a Pan American Games that we're sending a different staff and and, and different team of, of athletes to. For the most part, uh, so it, it allows this collective, this uh, coaching community that that goes to an international competition that can observe different, um, you know, different athletes, uh, uh, different coaching or, or different cultures, different countries swimming at an elite level and bring that back to the mix for us. So um, I think it is, uh, it, you know, for, for Greg and myself, it is about the collective as, as we go forward. We're going to have this collective of experiences, different experiences that athletes are going to have at a, at a world, a world university games or world championships or Pan American games. They'll advance those experience forward to, to an Olympic trials and Olympic games. And same thing on the coaching side that we can re rely upon. So as, as much as it is us as head coaches stepping back and, and observing, seeing if there are best practices that we can pick up on that can enhance uh, our environment and that can enhance our athletes' experiences. We're also relying upon uh, our greater coaching community uh, to help us and help move that thing forward. Uh, great question, Dan. Uh, and I think Dave kind of perfectly answered that uh, piece of it. Uh, anytime, you know, we travel, even in the collegiate system, we go to a dual meet or an invitational, we're having conversations, we're paying attention to what others are doing. Uh, you know, I think you, you keep your, your foundation, your core, um, but there's always little things that you can pick up along the way. And, 
uh, having the opportunity to work with um, uh, the, the technical group as well with Russell and Katie and, and Matt um, and, and Dan uh, and, and all the folks with the USOC, I think is, is really helpful. But, um, you know, one of the things that's been important over the, certainly through the last quad, or at least my, my take home from the last quad is, um, you know, not, not panicking when things don't go perfectly well for Team USA Swimming uh, in the middle of the quad. And in the last quad, it was probably the, the summer of 2015. Uh, this quad, we didn't necessarily have the, the greatest um, performance at the Pan Pac Championships. Um, but taking from those experiences, learning, making changes, uh, and, and moving forward towards the next thing. And so, um, you know, we, we want to keep our, our focus uh, on ourselves from that perspective and, and not worry too much about what the rest of the world is doing and, and how they qualify teams or what they put their focus on. For us, it's, it's about, um, you know, performance in Tokyo and whatever we can do from now until then to, um, to have success. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, right, thank you, see. David. Sorry for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We're really excited about this news. Looking forward to 2020 um, as well as 2019. Like David and Greg said, we have a lot to do before we get to 2020. So thank you all for being a part of this. And um, congratulations to David and Greg. All right, that does conclude today's conference. We thank everyone again for their participation.